Hello, YouTube viewers and random Ghostbusters fans. This is Spengler's Neutrono Wong from the now constantly delayed Ghostbusters Afterlife. So as we wait for the movie to finally get released, let's take a look at an item from the long-awaited sequel in toy form. This Neutrono Wand is lovingly based on the version seen in the film, with creators going to painstaking lengths of measuring the on-set prop, taking 3D scans and consulting with the prop master to give us ghost heads, the toy replica hybrid that we deserve. So after all this time and effort, how does the final product hold up? And most importantly, Importantly, where's the rest of the pack? Well, let's take a closer look. Starting off with the packaging, even the box has had careful thought put into it, resembling an old military long box in which the thrower is found in the film. A small separate sleeve contains all the details of the toy, ensuring that the look of the box remains unspoiled as it's easily removable. The sleeve features this great jumpsuit motif with an image of the thrower on its display mount, some minimalist artwork of the thrower, your bog standard legal guff and a brief breakdown of its features. The lockbox itself is truly special, despite the, what some would call, obvious handicap cap of being made entirely out of cardboard. I love the graphics on here, with the locks and handle of the box printed in high quality, the rust and bubbling seen around their edges, and the general dust and dirt across its metallic style surface. On the top you can see some worn hazard tape running across it with Neutrona wands stenciled onto it, the back even offers rusted hinges as well as an engraving of the Ghostbusters logo. So already the box is enough to make me very happy. Let's open it up and see if the toy itself offers the same fan pleasing experience. So here it is, the Spengler Neutrona wand, and initially it appears to be fantastic. The tip of the barrel is silver and looks somewhat plastic and cheap, but I like the attention to detail of the grooved section and the welds used to attach it. Likewise, the red wire looks to be attached accurately through these golden connectors, with a black strut at the far side containing black and orange buttons. The main barrel looks substantially different to the original, with a smooth wooden shotgun style grip replacing the thicker version with the indented finger grooves. This looks to be aged well, with smudges around the bolts that hold it in place on each end, combined with the uneven cut along its edges, and slits cut into its side. You can also spot a rubber wire stretching from the main body and through the grip itself. The barrel features more welding sculpt where it attaches to the body, and beside it you can see the stunted tube which offers some slight worn metal paint apps around its edges. The main body, however, contains a plethora of this excellent aged sculpting work, particularly around its edges, with silver paint apps used to resemble the black paint worn away, and even this has a rough shape to it, making it really come across as worn metal. This side gives us the red circuit diagram, as well as a very old and worn danger label, plus two adjusting knobs which are just moulded into place. The opposite side features the vent section, which also cleverly disguises the speaker holes, and this too features more of those great worn metal paint apps, which can likewise be seen across the bottom. The clipboard valve can be seen jutting out above the barrel and offers worn labelling across its surface, with a smaller static silver knob beside it. The top panel gives us the slits for the vent light as well as the silver intensity adjuster, plus more excellent paint bubbling and worn edges. On the back we get the power level indicator and its corresponding symbols, as well as both main power switches with the green wire attached to these lower sections. On the opposite side we get the box that houses the intensify and activate buttons, and again this has been nicely weathered, while behind it the green lever to extend the barrel can also be seen. The long handle has been attached to the back of the thrower, and this offers some brilliant welding sculpt where it attaches to the body silver scuff marks running across its surface and this bunch of cream tape which seems to be holding the lower grip onto it and this has been brilliantly aged with dirt and imperfections across it. Finally the underside looks very accurate featuring the metallic V hook and the belt hook behind it but look closer and you'll see a vast amount of legal blatzenhegelheukel has been moulded into it which is rather annoying but at least it's not present anywhere else on the gun. Oh wait no there there it is right right on the end of the handle there. Yeah, so overall for detail, despite some areas looking a bit weak due to the plastic construction, it looks remarkable. Turning to the all-important part, the features. I love how the activation sequence from the movies has been ported across to the wand, and pressing the thrower button on its own does nothing. Instead, the lower main power switch must be turned on first, which will activate the red LED on the bottom and trigger a power-up noise. 
Next, the upper main power switch has to be flicked, which will activate the lights across the body of the wand, as well as the power level indicator. The next stage is reached by flicking up the activation switch, which causes the vent light to switch on, and the inbuilt rumble motor to engage, coupled with the main power-up sound effect, which bleeds into a steady hum. Rotating the intensity adjuster actually works, making the thrower vibrate more or less depending on which way it's turned, with an accompanying rising or lowering of the humming sound. Finally, to fire the proton stream, hit the intensify button. This really works well as a roleplay toy. I love how the vibrating feature makes it feel like real energy is being channeled through the body of the device. The end of the barrel lights up orange and blue, but it doesn't look too spectacular. If only we could see more of it. Oh wait, that's right, we can. Pulling back on the green lever will cause the barrel to shoot out quickly, and this will trigger a sound effect as well. So now when the proton beam is fired, you will also be able to see an orange and blue strobing light sequence meant to represent the beam itself. How cool is that? However, firing the beam for too long will cause the wand to overheat, just like in the 2009 video game, and with no vent option available, it will automatically shut down after 15 seconds. The wand will also shut off if left to idle for 30 seconds. And to retract the barrel, push it back until it clicks into place, activating yet another sound effect. Likewise, the wand also features the correct sound effects when it's turned off. Speaking of the video game, extra features have been added to the wand straight from the game, which are cycled through by pressing the orange button near the tip of the barrel. And yes, if you want to get technical, this isn't how the wand or pack in general acted in the game, with various physical upgrades made to the pack to achieve these bonus options, but it's still a very nice inclusion all the same. The first of these modes is the slime blower. The barrel will change to a green colour and strobe while being fired. I also really have to appreciate the game accurate sound effects the wand makes while firing. Likewise, the hum of the wand will change to a bubbling effect as though slime is being filtered through it. The next option is the stasis stream, with the barrel now a blue colour and a sound effect similar to cracking ice. Finally, we get the Meson Collider mode, which offers a higher pitched whine and pulsating machinery sound effect. Firing in this mode is much different, with an initial red blast followed by yellow and red strobing effects. There is no boson darts or shock blast options, but what they have included is more than enough for me to love this, technically making it an afterlife replica with hidden elements from the video game pack. Flipping across to accessories, the wand comes with a base which is more of a cradle on which to rest the wand for display. It may not look like much but I appreciate its inclusion and it does its job well in offering a unique way to display it. The plastic feels very cheap and quite brittle in places and I think aging it up with the same paint apps used on the gun would have gone a long way. I asked at the start of this review where the rest of the pack was, as the wand isn't much use without a pack attached. Sadly, one isn't available, but I like what Hasbro have done here. They've included a secondary end cap for the handle, which allows the wand to be attached to a hose, therefore allowing it to be connected to a proton pack of your choice. This is also a big plus, as it still allows the batteries to be changed, which are accessed behind this cap. For example, I've attached this end piece to an old proton pack I picked up on eBay a few years back. It's by no means perfect, I know. But I like the wand to be attached to a pack, and this certainly does the trick. The lights on the pack had to be wired up separately, and the wand has no control over it, but it just completes the indescribable feeling of being a Ghostbuster to have this high-end collectible connected to a Proton pack. I might work on the pack in the future, perhaps mod it to look more like the video game pack, or to mimic the one seen in Afterlife if I get some decent high-quality photos of it. 
And doing a quick size comparison, I don't have many other wands to compare this to, aside from the one on my custom built pack, and even then they tend to be all over the place in terms of scale, but it seems to look around the same size. Comparing it to a few Ecto wands, it's significantly longer than the RGB and Playmobil versions, giving you a rough idea of its scale. So overall, what do I think of the Plasma series Spengler's Neutrono Wand? Well, it's safe to say I absolutely love it. Some minimal weak sections that look a bit cheap aside, the detail is gorgeous and I particularly love those weathered metal sections around its edges. It's a good solid size, slightly weighty, and despite its plastic construction feels very sturdy. For the price, it manages to pack in a lot of impressive features, from the correct activation sequence to the extending barrel to the lights and sounds. It's it's a marvellous bit of kit. The extra stream effects are a brilliant idea and gives fans a particle thrower that mimics the one from the video game in more of a role play sense than an actual physical replica. The stand is basic but serviceable, while I love that inclusion of the alternate end cap to allow it to be attached to any proton pack replica, which shuts up nerdy nitpicky fans such as myself. In the end, I cannot recommend this more. It's an absolute steal for the price, and it's sure to leave any ghost head with a big smile on their face. And I should know, as that's what it's done for me. We may still be waiting for Afterlife, but in the meantime, pick one of these up. It's more than enough to help pass the time. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this video. And why not be extra awesome, like all of these people? and support us on Patreon. Links are in the description. Until next time, farewell.